Hey, good evening. It's uh, Thursday, July 21st. Thanks so much for being here and welcome to Everyday Talk 24-7. Really glad to have you here. We're continuing to look at heart habits. The habits of our heart, the internal real us that can distinguish us as people who are trusting God. I'm defining a heart habit as the recurring responses of your heart that indicate the functional level of your trust in God's care for you. See, these habits, they're within us. They become ingrained in us. They respond to the reality that God is always caring for us. When I am lose sight of these things, that I appear just like the world around me. Even if I'm not, I act like they do because I worry about the things that they worry about. I'm obsessed with the things that people around me are obsessed with. I fear the things that they fear. But these hard habits will keep us from that. Will keep us focused on God and who he is. Tonight, we're looking at joy. We're looking at gratitude. Now we're looking at joy. And we've got three more to go after this. Joy is finding delight in what brings honor to God. Seriously. Joy is finding delight in what brings honor to God. That means it's not dependent upon my circumstance or other people's responses to me. Because regardless of the messes that we get into and the wrongs that are done to us, we always have the opportunity to bring honor to God. Joy is different than happiness. Happiness is very much connected to good things that happen to me and celebrations and all that. Joy runs deeper than that because it's not connected to people or circumstances. Joy is part of the fruit of the Spirit. That means that joy does not spring from human origin. It's not something I produce. But as this God's Spirit working within me, as I pursue His fruit, joy comes. So we see passages like in 2 Corinthians, that we can be sorrowful but always rejoicing. They are meant to work together. In Hebrews 12, Jesus, for the joy set before him, endured the pain of the cross. See, he didn't lose joy with the immense pain that he had but it was for the joy that was set before him. This is why joy is always appropriate and even commanded. But Thessalonians tells us, rejoice always. That's a command from God. It's not a cruel command. It steers us in the right direction. So the heart habit of joy is delighting in what brings honor to God regardless of circumstances. That's why it's intermingled with sadness and pain. It won't eliminate sadness or pain, but it's intermingled with them. See, because the source of your joy is not in the circumstances or in people, but in the Spirit of God and the promises of God. This hard habit of joy keeps us from being devastated by bitterness, pessimism, and discouragement. See, only with joy can we be a true realist because joy gives us this full, complete picture of God's work. That includes the pain and the heartache and the sadness and the devastation, but it never loses sight of the faithfulness of God. See, God's promises are the source of our joy, not the stuff around us. He will never leave us or forsake us. He is always with us. He knows everything about me, even before I think it. As David says, how precious is that? This good, loving God, this faithful God, this all-powerful God, the one who names all of the billions and billions of stars, knows me intimately, and he cares for me. I don't have to run from that. We know that he is working everything in my life for good, even the really hard things that cut deeply. He's not abandoned us. He's working for our good in these things. We know that our sins are totally covered 
by the work of Christ. Rather than having my sins gnaw away at me and eat at me and like so many other people around who are trying to get rid of their sin or trying to get rid of the impact of their sin, Jesus has taken that sin and made me whole and clean. See, those are promises. There are more, but those four promises are things you and I can rely on to give us joy. Therefore, this heart habit of joy, if we practice it in our hearts daily, focusing on what was the true source of joy, not circumstances, not people, but God and his promises, that prepares us for the hard moments of life that are sure to come. And they will come. They will come sometimes devastatingly quickly. But joy reminds us that life is not random. It's not situational, it's not circumstances. I'm not ruled by events. Rather, I can have a heart that is given over to God. This means I can have joy in dealing with difficult people. Because God hears my prayers when I'm concerned and I deal with these things. And he gives me ways to deal with them in his word. I've got, again, multiple playlists on that. We can have joy in difficult situations because we know that they are not random but opportunities to draw closer to God. We can have joy in sickness and injury, even in death. Not because we're so excited that these bad things happen, but because, no, again, God is there working with us and he's not abandoning us. We can have joy when there's financial success or loss because our wealth our well-being is not tied to the financial stuff of this world. We can have joy in our expectations. People, circumstances, they cannot provide ultimate satisfaction. See, our problem is we expect more from people and circumstances than they can possibly give. No one can be God to you. Only God can do that. And when I look for joy to come from those kinds of things, from somebody doing what I want them to do or treating them the way I want them to treat me or for circumstances to work out the way that I want. Even when I achieve the ultimate, it's never enough because it can't satisfy us. We cannot expect more of people and circumstances than they can give. Only God can give what we really need. So that's why I say joy provides, only joy provides a true, practical view of reality. It fleshes it out for us. It's not some crazy thing. It's not something where I'm just so jumping up and down happy at every bad event. Even in tears, as I'm sure you've experienced and I've experienced. Even in our deep tears, we can have that joy of knowing that our God hears us, sees us, and he's there for us. Joy. It's a heart habit that will bless you, draw you closer to God, and give you hope in dealing with the message of this world. And that's something that's really, really special. Practice these healthy heart habits. And gratitude and now joy. And we'll keep looking at these things. Yeah, thanks so much for being here. Check us out every day, talk247.com. And uh, you can have them subscribe, turn on post notifications. And Q&A Friday tomorrow, if you got questions, send those in. Looking forward to it. And uh, Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow. Have a good evening. Bye-bye.